do you cover do you have the the top of my head i All sure right. do don't show don't show the other half of my because i'm not wearing any shoes i got you man right. how's my hair lights okay lights are perfect okay Humba, 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 humba. La 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 Ready? Getting ready. Let me know when you're ready. What are you doing? Making a few adjustments. Now. Hey. Hello, hello, GX community. This is GX Bob coming to you guys again to do another DIY for your beloved GX 460. It's not a DIY. Yeah, I know. I, I couldn't think of any. I couldn't think of another opening line. I I don't know. I'm a creature of habit, I guess. So. Do it again. Go ahead. All right, let's do it again. Okay, here it goes. Hello, hello, GX community. This is GX Bob coming to you guys again to do a information session. It's not a DIY this time. We have plenty of DIYs coming up for you guys in future videos, but this one is going to uh, give you some information that might be helpful for you guys out there. It is going to showcase one of the mods I've done in the past that actually had a great ROI in my opinion. I wanted to show you guys how amazing our GX460 is when it comes to towing anything. I just came home from Long Beach, which is about, in traffic, it's about an hour and a half. I was driving in hot weather. I was driving in third and fourth gear all the way, uh, bumper to bumper in some parts of the freeways, especially the 710 freeway. Um, I was towing um, a full tank of gas which is about 23 gallons on the GX. I was towing about 20 uh, tanks of gas, 20 gallons of gas in my boat. My boat is about um, 13, 1400 pounds. My trailer is about 800 pounds. So the GX was towing a, a, a combined weight of more than 2000 pounds of metal. Okay, so all that was full of gas. Car was full of gas. My digestive system was full of gas uh do do a bean burrito for breakfast i had prior to going out to long beach but if you watch my instagram page i tell you guys how to empty out your bowels of gas without the use of medicine before during and after a hot date with the use of only two fingers but i'm not going to teach you guys that there because this one is about our transmission you're just going to have to go to my instagram page and i'm going to show you all that over there so what is optimal transmission temperature for your GX460? Well, it's going to be between 175 degrees to 185 degrees. Well, Bob, are you talking about Fahrenheit? Or are you talking about Celsius? I swear to God, I'm going to get that type of comment. So listen here, dumbass. If I wanted to give you readings in Celsius, I would have moved to a communist country and started accepting curling as a real sport. Listen, moving a janitor's broom back and forth on a bowling alley is not a considered a real sport and providing free health care for poor people um, is the total definition of a communist country. So there, Stop. I said it. Stop. You cannot say that in YouTube. I, I, I keep getting stupid comments. You know I keep getting stupid comments. Just edit that part out then. Yeah, just edit it out. All right, start over. No, not start over. Let's start from the communist country part. Cut all that shit out. Let's all right. take it from the top. <sighs> so normal cruising temperature uh, for your transmission on, on a normal day is going to be 175 degrees to 185 degrees. Okay, so if you're starting to see temperatures upwards of 200 degrees while you're towing stuff, perfectly normal and heavy load um, in traffic but if you're starting to push over 220 degrees I would start to get nervous the longer you stay past 220 degrees to 240 degrees your seals become shit your fluids become shit and eventually your gears will start slipping and you're going to start uh, smelling a uh, burning odor coming out of your center console and burning odor i don't know if you guys have ever smelled a burnt transmission it is worse than 
the smell of your fingers after finger banging a $2 hooker with yeast infection. You can never ever wash that smell off your fingers. I swear. And I heard it from a friend. It's not my personal account. I, a friend of a friend told me and that's how I know. So what happens when your transmission slips? I know a lot of you guys, especially people that drive brand newer Lexus GX460s have never experienced a failed transmission before. Well, let me tell you, a failed transmission will cause slippage. Your gears will start slipping and, and your, your, your car will eventually stall. Not the engine, but the car itself will just start cruising and you're not moving, you're stepping on the gas and you're gonna cause a huge accident and you're going to end up killing the family of four in the Toyota Sienna in the back of you that is on their way to Disneyland. You know, there's nothing worse than killing a family of four in a Toyota Sienna on their way to Disneyland. I'd rather be that douchebag that, that gets caught raping his male dog than killing a family of four in a Toyota Sienna on their way to Disneyland. So right after I came home, I immediately went to my garage. I took out my infrared thermal reader, one of these, and I started crawling underneath my truck and I started shooting a couple of locations on the transmission and I shot it at the transmission pan itself to get readings. So you're asking, if normal cruising temperature, especially uh, not normal because I'm towing over 2,000 pounds, my boat full of gas, my car full of gas, my digestive system full of gas, and I'm, I'm getting readings of 30 degrees less than 175 to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. So what's the deal? Why? And this is why, guys, my external transmission cooler that I installed way back then. I, ha I actually have a video on this. If you guys search through my library, I'll even add a link. I am not sponsored by Hayden, guys. I am not paid by Hayden, okay? I did this because I saw some people asking questions on I Hate Mud um, Club Lexus and I decided to do it myself. And I decided to do a step-by-step -step installation <coughs> video on how to install a external transmission cooler. I have never looked back because it is probably one of the best investments I have ever made. And it only cost me 50 bucks, guys. <coughs> so for those that have asked me what was the best mod, that was the cheapest, that gave me back the best ROI, I would actually have to say and admit that it was my Hayden external transmission cooler. So if you guys are not towing anything and you guys are just driving normal every day, daily to the shopping mall, working back or, or, or going up to the mountains or whatever, you really don't need an external transmission cooler, guys. It's for people that are, are towing travel trailers, toy haulers and, and boats like me. It, it gives me a warm and fuzzy. It gives me a lot of confidence that I am protecting probably the second most expensive component on this truck aside from the engine itself and it only costed me 50 bucks to do that mod so guys hope you guys enjoyed this video i am currently making another video that's going to be a supplement to this video it is how to get your dead and stranded suv out of harm's way not that your lexus is ever going to fail on you but it's still a machine it will still break down if you don't take care of it. And if, you, and if it breaks down in the middle of an intersection, if it breaks down, uh, uh, God forbid, on one of the lanes of the freeway for some apparent reason, I don't know, electrical issue, I don't know, one of your grounds is loose or your battery just went kaputz or whatever it is, if you're stranded, I'm going to teach you how to get out of harm's way by yourself without help. Peace.